In this hydrodynamics problem, we were asked, what gauge pressure must a machine produce in order to suck mud of a density of 1,800 kilograms per meter cubed up a tube by a height of 1.5 meters? So a few things that are of interest in that question. The thing we're asked to find is what's the gauge pressure. So this is a question ultimately about pressure. We're told that the mud has a density of 1,800 kilograms per meter cubed. So that might help us when we want to do the calculation and we know that the height that the mud has to go up to is 1.5 meters. So if I want to draw a diagram to try and understand this problem, then what I've got here is a tube. I don't know what the width of the tube is. In fact, I want to draw two tubes for the moment here. And the tube is placed inside some mud. There we go, so mud's underneath here. And what's going to happen here is that we're going to change the pressure which is inside the tube and that's going to suck the mud up. So let's have a little think about what that actually means. The tube on the left hand side, I'm going to leave open to atmosphere. Pressure up here is one atmosphere. And what does that do to the mud? Well, I think we know that the mud just sits at the bottom of the tube. It doesn't get sucked up at all. In fact, this whole idea of pressure sucking is more of a common term language in physics. We realize that pressure uh, ultimately only provides a pushing force. We think in terms of uh, what produces pressure, that's the gas of atoms bouncing around inside. And those atoms, when they hit a wall, can only push against the wall. The atoms can't pull against the wall. So what's happening here is that the pressure of atmosphere is pushing down upon the mud. And from Newton's second law, we know that can't be the only force which is acting on the top of that mud there. There must be another force to stop it from accelerating. What's that produced by? Well, that's the mud underneath which is pushing back. Well, how can it push back? Well, that's because outside the tube, we have the pressure of atmosphere pushing down on the mud. And from Pascal's law, which tells us that pressure is transmitted through a fluid in, uh, completely undiminished, it means that we also have a pressure which is pushing up from inside the fluid. And that uh, pressure is at the interface of, of the mud there is the same if we travel in a horizontal direction. I say horizontal because we also know that pressure varies with depth, something you might recall is that the pressure of an incompressible fluid is given by the pressure at the top of the fluid plus rho g h, the density of the fluid, uh, times acceleration into gravity times the height. This term here is actually the weight per unit area um, of the fluid. So pressure increases with depth. So that tube there is one which was open to atmosphere. What about the one which is on the right? And what's going to happen here is we're going to change the pressure by connecting a pump to the system. So we're going to lower that pressure, so that pressure is going to be less than the pressure of atmosphere. And if we decrease that pressure, then our mud is going to be drawn up the tube to some height. How is it going to be drawn up the tube? Well, it means that the, the pressure underneath the mud is able to support the column height of, uh, of mud there, plus a small amount of pressure which is above uh, the column. So if you want to think about it, the pressure at the bottom of the fluid still has to be equal to the pressure of atmosphere, because it's the pressure at the bottom of the, of the fluid here. Where does that come about? That's going to come about from the weight per unit area. This part here is rho times g times h, plus the pressure acting at the top of the fluid. And we can call that here p naught. This is following on from the equation on the right here. So the pressure at the bottom of the fluid, which is P, is going to be equal to the weight per unit area of the column, which that pressure can support, plus the pressure above. So what we want to find out is what is this pressure above P naught? So let's rearrange this equation here. And write this as P naught is equal to P minus rho G times H. Now, this expression here is actually in SI unit. So it works for absolute pressure. And so the pressure term is going to be in Pascals. It's the absolute pressure, uh, rho G H, as long as this is in kilograms per meter cubed, meters per second squared, and height in meters. This can also return the uh, equivalent of Pascal's. Now, remembering we want to find out what the gauge pressure is at the top here. The gauge pressure. And so the gauge pressure is the pressure above atmosphere. Remember that the absolute pressure is given by the pressure of atmosphere plus the gauge pressure. So this pressure P0 isn't the gauge pressure. It's an absolute pressure. So I can replace P0 with the pressure of atmosphere plus the gauge pressure. On the right hand side of the equation, we've got P. P is the pressure at the bottom of the mud. We know uh, from Pascal's law that this pressure down here is equal to the pressure of one atmosphere. So I can replace that P with the pressure at atmosphere minus rho times G times H. And if you look at this equation here, you can see it on the left hand side, 
the pressure of atmosphere and the pressure of atmosphere cancel. So I can say my gauge pressure is equal to minus rho gh. We can put this in our calculator uh, with some numbers here, so minus 1800 kilograms per meter cubed multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by 1.5 uh, meters, so it's all in SI units. It returns minus 26,460 pascals, which is negative 26.5 kilopascals. That's our gauge pressure. So let's just assess this and make sure this makes sense. So the first thing I note is that the gauge pressure is a negative quantity. And I've always thought that uh, pressure is a positive quantity, so how can my gauge pressure be negative? Well, the absolute pressure must always be a positive quantity. So does my gauge pressure being a negative value mean that my absolute pressure is a negative value as well? well let's just remind ourselves here that the absolute pressure can always be found by adding the atmospheric pressure to the gauge pressure. Our atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. If we add that to negative 26, it'll still be a positive value. So it's something like you know, 75 kilopascals approximately. So that's okay. So if ever you come across a negative pressure, it must be a gauge pressure. It can't be an absolute pressure. This also introduces a very hard limit to the height that we can bring the mud up using this technique because as my uh, height of my column of uh, mud increases, it gets higher and higher, this gauge pressure must get um, more and more negative. So and eventually at a height of around uh, 6 meters, my gauge pressure will be minus 101.3 kilopascals. And at that point, my gauge pressure can't get any lower. That's the absolute hard minimum that I can get to. Uh, and uh, that means that I won't be able to bring my column of uh, mud any higher than six meters. And this is a real world problem uh, when people were in the mines trying to pump water out. And we know from lectures that uh, you can only pump water out in this technique uh, to a height of about 10 meters. Why is it a smaller height uh, for mud? Well, it's because the density is higher. So you can't, can't support as much. So if you understand the concept of pressure changing as a function of height and the difference between absolute pressure and gauge pressure, then I encourage you to try uh, question uh, 27 in chapter 15, because uh, it's only by doing these problems that you'll really cement this understanding.